Welcome, everyone, to our very first episode of Clash Course. I have with me Alex, uh, who is on our Clash committee. I'm super excited to have him on here. Um, we're going to start off with a very simple question. Alex, l- tell me how you got into uh, Fab and then what drew you into uh, Clash specifically. Yeah, absolutely. So I got to say, the thing that drew me into Fab, I had been watching a few videos of it back when Monarch came out. And everything about Monarch seems super interesting. I'm a big fan of the light and shadow concepts in, in many like fantasy games, as well as media and so on and so forth. So I was like, wow, that's super cool. But I never got into it. I just kind of watched it from the background. I played Magic for a long while. So that was just kind of like, where it started um but after i saw uprising i was like well this is this is kind of cool i wonder what this is all about i saw that tcg player was doing a bundle for uprising and i went well you know what like i'm looking to to change my investments into certain things and uh you know i'm not that i was getting tired of magic but i wasn't really playing it a whole lot and so i was like well let's see what flesh and blood's about check it out it seems like a really great game i like the concept of the i did i watched like a whole tutorial on how to play and i was like this seems like a really cool concept of like kind of having everything and then being stripped down to nothing as the game continued so i thought that was really cool and when i opened uh my first box of uprising i ended up uh you know obviously dromai had already been something somebody that i was just like this is this is such a cool concept of being able to use these these illusions to uh, create, uh, you know, big dragons of legend, and also, uh, it, you know, not actually a total coincidence. By the way, Ashen Wings is has been my handle for a while, like before Dromai was even a concept in LSS's head. I, I was, you. I was wondering about that because mm-hmm. I saw your name, and I, when when I first got introduced to your content, I, it's honestly hasn't been very long. And I right. was like, Ashen Wings, huh? He must be a Dromite player. But that, yep. that's and funny. It's, it's insane to me how, like, this hero just call, like literally, they turn Ash into dragons. And I'm just like, well, I didn't think there was a character literally already made for me that I needed to play. Like, this is insane. I got to check it out. And so, uh, you know, I bought that TCG player bundle. I opened up my first box. I pulled a uh, Marvel Necria out of the first box and i just went i'm in i'm sold i don't need i i'm in you don't even need to to dissuade me i figured out how to you know start doing the deck list and stuff and figuring it out the only things that were available around me were classic constructed armories yep. i didn't really have a dive into other uh formats but uh i started classic constructed and played dromai for a little while and i mean i still play dromai now but I played Dromai there, got my butt kicked a whole bunch, and I just went, all right, cool, let's just get better as we go, move on forward. But it wasn't until um, I found out about Commoner, and I went, oh, okay, well, this is kind of cool. This was about a year, I would say maybe a year later, I started looking more into Commoner, because, frankly, I like collecting a lot, Mm -hmm. Yes, and Commoner allowed me to not have to spend so much money on the actual game itself to play because if i wanted to switch heroes it would cost me like you know another like two three four hundred dollars or something to change heroes whereas if i wanted to change heroes in commoner it cost me like 10 bucks so i was like all right cool yeah, let's if, move over to commoner that. and see <laughs> if that exactly if i don't already have all the bulk sitting in my people who, yeah you have yeah. bulk there's a lot of people that bulk and you're like yeah. hey i need these you, cards can you can you spot and, and, me? and they just hand them out. I mean, like it's and it was super great because like that was the thing. A, a lot of people at the LGS I went to were always just like, you need bulk. Here's bulk like you no, you seriously. Five thousand cards. You can just take them home. I don't I don't I don't want them anymore. Like you can just have them. And I was, I was like the bulk king at our armories. Um, yeah, everybody would open it up and be like, here, Nathaniel, here's the commons and rares. I just need this. Majestic. So good. Exactly. Right. And they'll just hand like so many people have always been like, all right, does anybody want bulk? And I'm like, yeah, I'll take it. Like, you know, I'm not a hoarder, but I certainly <laughs> have a whole bunch of stuff now for all these decks. And I mean, after building a few commoner decks and playing around with a couple of friends, I was like, well, you know, commoner is nice, but much like much like ethan when he was talking about leviah into into commoner 
I just I wanted to play Viscerai, but I can't really play Viscerai well in yeah. Commoner. Like it's just not it wasn't very good. And you know, you don't have access to any of the really powerful rares like Mauvren Skies or um and it just it wasn't as efficient. And I was like, well, I can't really play Rune Blade, which makes me feel a little bit bad. And even still, what made me feel bad is again, Dromai can only play Ashwings. There's no, yep. you couldn't play any of her actual dragons in Commoner. And I was like, well, I mean, Rake the Embers is a busted card as it is, but the, the fact that I can't utilize any of what Dromai does essentially as a diverse hero with all of her diverse dragons, it felt like wrong. And not to mention after, you know, during Uprising, that's when Ethan came out with Clash. Um, and I had seen it. I had gone, oh, that's a cool concept. I like seeing that. I watched the Clash Bash. I was very like, okay, cool. This is a nice little concept. But, you know, there wasn't really any, there's, you know, it's not many people playing it. I didn't have a whole lot of people who were like, who still would play TCGs at all near me until I moved. And uh, so it was like very hard for me to just be like, hey guys, I have decks. You want to play? You want to play these? No, no, like almost nobody would. And so I was just like, all right, well, I guess I'm just only playing Classic Constructed because that's what everybody else wants to play. But uh, getting into Clash, honestly, after um, everything moved over, I saw your your post for changing of the rule sets and some of the bans and, and uh, uh, restrictions that were put onto the stuff. And I was just like, okay, well, you know, it seems like it seems like this is actually moving forward pretty well now. Cause it, I mean, it had been, it'd gone quiet for like a year almost. So the interesting thing of, of kind of the clash formation was um, like, it was still active, right? Like there, mm-hmm. there was just that one clash bash and it was still there, but there was a little, like there was little, little things happening here and there. Or mm-hmm. Like I would see every now and then someone on Twitter is like, Oh, we tried clash at our armory mm-hmm. and this and that. Um, I stayed very active. Actually, funny story. I stayed very active because I, uh, I will claim the, uh, be- I will claim the idea beginner of clash. Um, yeah. And you might have saw that. <laughs> mm-hmm. So like, so like, as soon as I was like, "Oh, I want commons and rares," because I was like, "You have like, I really love commoner, but you just like Fisserai needs rares." Um, a lot of the characters I liked just needed rares. I'm a big mm-hmm. Azalea fan, and I have played Azalea since crew, and like, she was total crap back then. Right. And like, even with like, she just needed. She was like Leviathan. She just needed help. Now she doesn't. Um, yeah, yeah. Now, now she's doing pretty well for herself. She but. <laughs> um, but so like I stayed active, very active in building decks because after that happened, um, shortly after Ethan was like, hey, let's do this. And I loved his rule set that he did of like, hey, let's do specializations. Because mm-hmm. like, if, if I had thought of doing it and, and created something like no way would I have done specializations. Um, right. But I loved how he immediately was like, let's do specialization. Let's do all the weapons so everyone can use their weapon that they want to use. Mm-hmm. Um, so he like took it to the next level. And I immediately was like, I love this. And what, what started, what kind of started my journey into, I want to be do as much clash as I possibly can was I went to, uh, I visited my brother and in in new york and i have the blitz decks mm-hmm. uh and so at that point it was just monarch and aria right and so i was like hey briar's really good you should try the briar blitz deck to learn it and i don't know if you've ever played the briar blitz i deck. have yeah it's earth and it's terrible <laughs> yep it's so bad it's, like it's just not it's not good. you know it's funny like, that's even if it was lightning lightning the, build would have been better the deck was at least so side tangent, but like my when I was trying to get my girlfriend into playing the game, I put all three of the Aria Blitz decks in front of her, and I was like, "Pick one, whichever one's your favorite. I'll go against you with whoever I have, and we'll see what happens." She beat me with the Briar Blitz deck after mm-hmm. me teaching her how to play the game. She beat me, and she was just like, "Yeah, I still don't know if I'm all right about it." And I'm just like, "Yeah, it's probably because the deck is only Earth. Like that's <laughs> yeah." You don't have it's not as fun. It doesn't seem fun doing yeah, you're anything to do your in there. wide turns and you just do one big one big attack. Uh-huh. That's it. 
That's it. It's like, you're, like, you're, not, you're, you're, you're playing Runeblade, not Guardian. You know, like, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Anyways, I digress. So, so that happened. And immediately he was like, okay, I got to make my own decks. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, well, there's, you know, I've been doing like Clash. This, this was around the time that Ethan made Clash. And I was already like coming up with ideas. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, all right, um, these decks aren't doing it good enough. So I want to build every hero. I want to build the Clash deck of every hero. And that mm-hmm. kind of started my thing of where I have a suitcase full of literally every hero. Right, every hero, so, right? Um, in my suitcase, like I just have a big suitcase, an old school suitcase that I carry around. It looks like I'm, you know, doing a drug trade or something when I get into an LGS. <laughs> I'm like, well, here's my, here's my good. Like, like, like the Kaiba of, of yes. Flesh and Blood just popping open the suitcase. Yes, I literally have is. the old school, like you click it and they pop up and oh, you open so it up. Nice. So good. So good. <laughs> um, so, uh, so that's kind of like what started my journey into mm-hmm. it. I feel like your story is very similar to like how I got there of like mm-hmm. commoners fun, but just doesn't quite hit it. And, exactly. Um, I think for me too, the, the fun part of clash is that I like, I'm okay with decks being expensive in clash mm-hmm. because there's a lot of decks that are cheap. Oh, for sure. For sure. The, the, the duality of it is very, I mean, cause like, I think really, and really the only thing that one would consider the expensive part of clash is just based on the classic constructed heroes having like meta power with the specializations that we could use in clash. Like for instance, mm-hmm. blood on our hands, right? Cause I came out and that's, everybody's that's, playing that's- I. Blood on her hands being twenty dollars is hilarious because I think about that card for like two or three bucks. Right, I think I think most people did. <laughs> I mean, like that. The, literally, it was only ever used in the Blitz because obviously she was only young until you know heavy hitters, and it was used in Blitz. She did super great in Blitz. Obviously, she's a living legend, and so you know, no, but it was. I think it, what I'd be way way wrong in my timeline, but I think she got announced for Classic Constructed like maybe like a month or like a few weeks later after she hit living legend in blitz. And Ooh. so like, I'm imagining a lot of people were just like, all right, cause I get all these blood on my blood, on our hands out of here and like sell them off. And but people were buying them for super cheap. Cause I think it's a, that's an Everfest card, right? If yeah. I recall. So no, yeah. I mean, already nobody was buying Everfest and specializations are very niche things. And sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. We'll talk quickly about the, the the Clash Bash is, you know, just a little online tournament that we're mm-hmm. running um, for for Clash decks, webcam, Talashar mm-hmm. uh, for the next, I don't know, I think it's like six weeks left or so. Yeah, um, something like that. God, has it already been three weeks into the event? <laughs> something oh, like that. Oh, my gosh. Oh, dude, you got to no get way. your cards. I got to get my cards, man. <laughs> I got to get eight games in six weeks. <laughs> Yeah. Oh shoot! All right. Well, I'm gonna do some. I'm gonna do some shopping then. So yeah, I know. I've been like slowly. I never buy bulk, but this time I was like, oh, I'm. I need a handful of bulk cards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really. It's honestly really the specializations and like some of the rares that I'm missing. Uh, outside yeah. of that, I have like nearly everything. So yeah, I just so I just got the last cards I need for KO. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm waiting on a couple for Olympia. Like the side deck is done. Mm-hmm. And I'm not touching the um I'm just not touching the, the guardians until yeah. cards come down a little bit. Price is a little yeah. high. <laughs> yeah. for I, mean, I mean I think Victor's I think Victor's Shield is like it's twenty dollars now. Or twenty two, I think yesterday. I mean I that's it. crazy good because I think like even back when Victor like first won an event, I think it was like fifty for the mm-hmm. for the rainbow foil. I was like uh, like I don't know about all that because like, you know, I as much as it comes down to that same deal where like, you know, you have Viscerize specialization, which is technically Arknight Shard also. And it's like, yeah, but like, you're not really running. You don't Arknight run Shard. that. Like, I, tried, not, you, you I tried running Arknight Shard in, in a Clash deck of his, and it was terrible. It's bad. It was awful. Yeah. Because it's I was a, like, it's a, I need it's a block. Long game, it's a long game card, and the games are not long in Clash, like normally. They're not very long. And so that's why... The card, the card gets more value the more you pitch it and you make more rune chance. That's its purpose. But like in Clash, it, you know, heck, even in Blitz, like you weren't running it because it was just yeah. like you're not, you you're not, don't not need enough. this. Right. There's, I think the longest game I've played is like, sorry, I'm just trying to plug in my computer. No, you're good. 
The longest game I've played, I think, is like 30 minutes. On average, it's around like 20 to 30. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And that's not long enough. But yeah, so what are um, what are some heroes that you think could be Dark Horses or just excited to see play out or excited mm. to try or excited to play against? Well, I you know, and it's interesting because obviously we here in Clash still have ice. So yes. it's a workaround and I'm expecting somebody to be playing some Icelander, if not Oldham. Uh, because those are, I mean, those are just regular meta. I mean, they're, they're good. Yeah. But um, especially since Oldham can run Winter's Whale, because, it, I mean, he's just, it's very, very good. But as far as, like, Dark Horses, I'm, I mean, I'm seeing a lot more hype around KO. Uh, mm-hmm. Personally, myself, I'm, even the one that I just built for my video, I, I think I might even run that, because I think the concept of doing a two attack double dominate turn just sounds insane to me. And I'm just like, I don't know. Guardians can't even do that. Like what, it, what can, is this? Like I can vouch for you. KO is, is very powerful. Nuts. Uh, I mean, I've he played, seems genuinely so good. I've played several games against KO and any game, any game that I've lost, I uh-huh. doesn't feel like it's close. Any right. game that I've won, <laughs> it's been like, to the wire. A nail biter, right? I'm t- I'm telling you. That's that's why I like it. I mean, like he just he puts on so much pressure. And so I'm I'm trying to figure out if that's what I want to try out doing. Um other other dark horses though, I think like as far I don't know what merchant gameplay is like, but I don't expect anybody to be playing the squizzy and floof in 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 the format, but if they are that's like that's probably like the dark horse because he makes gold as opposed to anything else. Um, yeah. What else? Um, I, I will say this: anybody who wants to try a merchant, we do have a special award for someone who does. We do. We do have a games. special a special thing. If you, you if you end up doing, it, but if you do, well, I think it's like three or four games of merchant. Yeah, we have something it, for you. <laughs> it's. I mean, my gosh! If you're just, I mean, you, I don't even think you need to win. I think if you're just, if you're just yes, there, no, it's just, to if play you play out, like, three or four games with merchant, we want, we want everybody to have fun. I think it's the big thing about this clash bash that is something that's really important is that it's very much so a fun, laid back you know, kind of event. We're not doing this for some, you know, crazy, you know, 5k prize or whatever. It's, it's mainly just for us to kind of get an idea about what the meta looks like, get an idea about what people would like to play, how matchups work into what, because obviously, you know, if the entire clash bash ends and we find out that squizzy and floof is undefeated, I'll, I'll, I will eat this mug. I'll eat this mug. <laughs> Cause it's, that's but that's why that's why we're doing it you know we're we're trying to figure out what what those those dark horses are and i i think we're not going to see we're not going to see a ton of play i'd imagine from betsy because bravo is just good and oldham mm-hmm. is just better so i think i think finding you're probably not going to find a lot of betsy um and Kano, actually, you know, you, you've had your own personal uh, scrimmage against a Kano, and that's not anything that I would, I, I would have definitely expected that to be, much like, he, much like he is in Classic Instructed right now, Kano is a dark horse. Not many people expect you to play Kano until you flip him, and then you're like, oh, God, my whole life, like, this is, this, this is a completely different game now. So yeah, I am, um, so... I ran into a Kano and Talashar. Mm-hmm. Kano and Talashar. They absolutely whipped my butt. Ugh. And I was like, this deck, this might have, this might, there might be something here. Mm-hmm. So I went in and I literally went in at the end of the uh, match until it tells you what cards were played. Right. And um, I went through and I was like, these are all the cards that were played. And like built the deck quickly. I'm building it myself, right? <laughs> so um, it took, you know, like like okay. And so then I was like, all right. So that I, I obviously built the Kano one, and it wasn't. It was okay, um, but this was this was on another level. Um, mm-hmm. I tried it out several times. It was not great. It was it was it was difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, like it was it was good, but you just you, you know it's just like anything. You just got to know what you're looking for. 
Right. And I kind of know what I'm looking for, but I don't really know how to play Kano that well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was like, I could see the potential. And then the Kano that I just played that beat me, uh, I was talking to him afterwards. It was it was Teppa, who's on the committee as well. Oh, perfect. Okay, right. So and he was saying, I know, I know Teppa, Teppa loves his wizards. So yeah, loves that stuff. Yeah, he was like, that was only like my fourth or fifth game on Kano. Um, and I and he was just like, I took your list and I shifted a little bit because of cards I had and also things I like. Right. Um. So apparently, the list I have is a good base. <laughs> we'll see i mean but I, like, I mean you'd imagine most of the cards are i mean it's it's fairly i mean i'm not gonna say it's simplistic because like i've never played kano a day in my life but i think a lot of it just comes down to can you sequence everything correctly with the right amount of resources i mean well, you have uh, e-pots you can use mm-hmm. you have and it uh is is blazing eight blazing aether is his specialization right yep so that i mean you already have got uh, you just don't have Aether Wildfires, but you have Aether Flares, and those are just as good. Okay. Um, yeah, you know, there's plenty of different things that you're able to play that still... And, it, and at 20 life, I mean, like, the you're already yeah. well within most Kano's kill ranges outside of, like, you know, a couple extra Majestics that are running Classic Destructive. You basically need, so. like, as a Kano player, you need just a couple of decent turns. Yeah. Literally, you just set, set up, if, if you're able to get a nice first, like, three hands and just pitch deck in, in a way that makes sense, well, you, I don't you even know get that your ops off, you're, you're good. Pitch stacking, I don't even know if you really get to the second cycle. Um, right. Because you blow them up so quickly or mm-hmm. so quickly. Um, but with him, it's even just... The, the interesting thing, of especially Kano in, in a budget format, is what do your turns look like? Right. You're playing a lot on your turn. And then you're playing a lot of it is you usually start your couple turns on your turn and then you like when you blow them up is 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 on their turn. Or yeah. like you're like, okay, like there's a couple times where I would attack and then I would have no cards in my hand because like I, you know, blocked or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so I would attack and then I have nothing. And then it's like, okay, I'm just gonna try to get some chip damage in here. Right, I'll blow you up, and I'll block. You know, block three. Here's a like a red eye, a random red I have, and I'll try to get some chip damage in. And then on my turn, I'll just you know try to throw a damage or two at you. Mm-hmm. Uh, what kills Kano in this is is the fact that you need to be able to play on your turn until you're trying to blow him up. Right. And so what that does though is if you get out of sequence, you can get out of sequence very quickly. Mm. Where like all of a sudden you're only playing on their turn. And then it's like, uh, that's that's what kills Kano. Right. You want to be able to do. I mean, that's I mean, that's kind of what puts Icelander personally, like on top of Kano, because like I've even seen I mean, what uh, we make best did that Kano list with the same like wounding bulls and all that same stuff, too. Uh, And I was like, well, that's like I guess that's like a fun way to do almost exactly like what Icelander is doing. Right. But you know, you're you're throwing them for a loop, certainly, by being like, okay, cool, I'm going to block with everything, and then I'm going to attack you with a big attack card on my turn, and then set up, and then attack you with a big attack turn on my, on my turn, and then set up. But I think even still, I mean, Kano has, like, nearly no life to start, right? I mean, he's, you know, 15 to 20 yeah. is not... Well, 15 to Icelanders, 18. That's right, life. 15 to 18, yeah, deal. eight. A big deal. A three, three life, I mean, that'll change you. Three life and also no real like uh like disruption like control or anything of that sort right i mean icelander is at least able to be like okay cool i don't have what i need so i'm just going to stall you and then i'll continue doing my thing and then finally when i get my you know red aether ice vein and you only have ab4 I, you know you're gonna you're gonna get stomped out and then i'm just gonna be able to hang out and, and have a great time it's there's a lot more versatility with icelander which is obviously why she LL'd a lot sooner than Kano mm-hmm. did. Um, but I do think that overall uh, Kano, I mean, there was back when I was playing commoner, uh, I played an event in calling indie and <laughs> somebody was, somebody was die hard on and something I've personally wanted to try because I've never been able to do this combo before. And it always seems so cool is the, the sun kiss moon wish mm. Kano. Mm-hmm. And, 
I think the concept of it is just so insane because it's just like do damage, gain life, do arcane, just like you're able to just kind of switch it up and be a little bit more hybrid with it. But I don't know its legs in Clash enough. Like I think that's definitely I like the Volcor heroes, so I want I want to learn all the Volcor heroes and Kano being one of them. I eventually want to get to that point. Um, but yeah, I, I think I think Kano can do pretty well in the format. Obviously, nobody's not running AB because you know we have Icelander to deal with, and I think even I mean even your Vincent build, like you know you gotta have you gotta have AB like. I mean, dude, you came in with like eight rune chants in a Phantom Banshee, and I was like, "This is this is a lot. Like, that's a lot coming into me right now." And and then it got go again, and I was like, "What's going on? This is this is crazy." So it's it, there's very much so AB. You know, I'm not gonna say hate, but like, there's, you know, people know that AB exists. I think that's something that we're also, you know, as part of members of the committee, you know, we want to see where the the threats lie. Uh, you know, we're not, it's not like we're going to like ban AB or ban arcane damage entirely, right? But like we want to see kind of where heroes lay. So that way it's not like, cool, if we ever run a Clash Bash, we know that Icelander and Oldham, that combo right there is going to make sure that everybody loses and nobody has fun and we stop play, doing Clash Bashes altogether because nobody's going to want to sign up for them. So that's kind of our, our like purpose, I guess, throughout this is just to make sure that, that we, that, we we generate a good idea about who is doing well into these matchups. And, you know, I think really it's just about having fun and collecting data. That's the yeah, purpose. A hundred percent. I think another, and I'll just tell my own horn. I think Vincent's another dark horse. I know oh, I'm the sure. only one experimenting with that. It's so good though. It's such a seriously, like, it's I a mean, very scary. Like on my side, it's very scary because you're always on the edge of losing. Oh, for sure. You're just I mean, always on the edge of losing. I hate having to de- the thought of me having to drop to three cards at the beginning of my turn has has me not even wanting to touch the hero. But like after watching you play, like the hero, I mean, it's really, really good. And that's a, it's another another clear example that like you couldn't play Vincent the same way you're playing her now in Commoner. No, you, you wouldn't. Can't touch her in you Commoner. wouldn't. You you would not be able to do that. And the fact that just like the Deathly Whales and the Deathly Delights, the Mauvren Skies, the I mean, it's just all really, really important to a build for a rune blade. And I mean, being able to generate as many rune chants as you were, getting all that stuff together, I think I think Vincent is a fantastic Dark Horse pick because I don't think many people are gonna choose her in a budget format. And then when you come in for, you know, 13 with you know eight eight like four or five room chance on the back end it's like okay i have to figure out my I, whole game plan and the tempo is yours officially like yeah the 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 loss i did to kano i was actually running it was been set against kano and it literally mm-hmm. came down to who can do the most damage on your right. turn like i did i literally came in and did 13 damage to him in a single turn but i had to use up so much and so he blasted mm-hmm. me back and then it came back around to me and i was like oh my god i don't have enough blues to like no. protect myself <laughs> so i just like i just gotta do it and like hope he doesn't that's, have it and that's it you gotta hope they don't have it you gotta hope they don't have it they just, you know, were able to kind of get over me. I that was one of the matchups I was worried about, though. That was like with Vincent. I'm, I don't think I have enough AB in there. Mm-hmm. Um, I only had like AB two plus a spell void two, and I really should be probably like more like AB three with a spell void. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was just, you know, it was just tricky. Um, but yeah, it was it was a it was a very fast game. I can tell you that it was like two or three turns. Oh my gosh! Like who has it? Um, right. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. But yeah, Vincent, yeah. I'd say Vincent is a dark horse. I I think that so like I know all of the heroes, and it just comes down to you know like what do you like? Like I think I wouldn't say Benji's a dark horse, but I just don't see people playing Benji as much mm-hmm. as saying like Katsu or Ira. Ira is very very good. Like why play Benji over Ira? So exactly. I would say like he's he's a potential one. Um, I think Benji has some legs if you build him correctly agreed i I think so too i I know a lot of people are trying out like tiger benji stuff in Mm -hmm. like blitz and stuff like that and so i think that's pretty cool that 
he's got that. But I think that's another thing too, right? Uh, the card that really makes like Crouching Tiger things really good is Tiger Swipe, and it's majestic, and it's not a specialization. So you know you're you're dealing with what you have. But even the, I mean, even the equipment that came out of the Ira Blitz deck and mm-hmm. you know round table was incredibly good. I, I would like to make a Benji deck though. I think Benji is I think Benji is a dark horse. Like Spring Tidings is such an insanely good specialization. <laughs> like so good. But if you're going against a warrior, you nearly lose because they block two or, or guardian. They block two with their equipment and it's just like, cool. All right. We're, yeah, you gotta you we're gotta just gonna end it off weird into weird situations for sure. Yeah. Or or hit a break point mm-hmm. for them to block it for sure. But yeah, so I, I think that there's several things that's like, okay, you know, you try out Try out this hero, whatever. Right. I think I think we're going to see a lot of consistency though in heroes being played. Like I'm sure we'll see a lot of Kasai, probably mm-hmm. some Ko. Um, I don't know. I, I have yet to see a Prism. I think Prism has worked. Huh. Like I, I, I yeah. think that there is some good stuff in Prism. I was actually trying out new Prism, and I faced down an Ira, and mm-hmm. I was able to stabilize at like two life and then beat her. <laughs> This is on Talishar, so who knows? Right. Um, so I think that there's like there's some things there. I don't. I think new prism versus old prism, um, they both do different things. I actually yeah. think I I actually don't think that old prism has like a leg up over new prism. Mm-hmm. Um, just from like testing her out and stuff, like there's some cool things you can do. They do run very similar because you're using the first luminaris and both instances. Right. Like but having that ward four. On um, four different, four or five different angels is is huge. Yeah. Um, so like, there's there's some interesting stuff there. I'm curious to see what what people are are going to try. I'm excited that people are already pulling out Kano mm-hmm. <laughs> and seeing like, like stuff like that. It's um, so great. I mean, there's a nice amount of versatility and and variety that you see in Clash. I mean, like that's just the perk of having you know no living legend system and having many more young heroes than than adult heroes and i think i mean there's there's always somebody out there who's going to throw some stuff out there and just be like this is the wildest build of chain i've ever seen a day in my life like this is oh my gosh i saw someone do something so chain for me has always been block out until like three or four turn three right. or four and then just do that. go nuts right they the, the were craziest chain link pulling off um I just blanked on the name of the card. What's the one? Create three rune chants. Um, read the runes. Read the runes. Mm-hmm. They play. They did chain into read the runes. Read the runes gets go again since chain mm-hmm. targets that, and then swing in with a big attack. Like they were beat me on like turn two or three. I think three because I just I I was like okay they're gonna play a defensive game and I'm getting mm-hmm. ready to do that and all of a sudden they're blowing me out of the water. Huh. Would just. Here's read the runes into um, the one where it gets go again if it if the if rune chant hits or you deal um, it's in crew. I can like meet, I see all the meet pictures. And greet? Meet and greet. I see all the pictures in my head, yeah. but like <laughs> me too. <laughs> the second you said it, I was just like, I don't know if rune blade that well, but I think that's meet and greet. Yeah, meet and greet. So, so they did like that into meet and greet. Did it did some damage to me into mm-hmm. uh, a, some big big huge attack and i was just like what is going on like i i was not prepared for turn one chain to just come out and throw right. me go, out. go tall chain <laughs> some some interesting concept for sure i think it's you know it's not normally what you see you do normally see that just like block out until turn three or four stack up your your cards in your banish zone and then just come in for like a chain link of like 11 and just go right. okay all right like you lose i win that's how this works so but I think I definitely think that there's just there's a lot of different ways to play these heroes. And I think yes. that with the ability to, you know, give people a little bit more room to work with their own personal builds with specializations and with um, uh, majestic weapons and or well, any any rarity weapon uh, and then any, you know. I don't know if people are running a lot of mentors these days. I don't know if Kasai is still Kasai, running her mentor. Kasai, I run, right? I run it in Kasai. I think yeah. And I'm still wondering, I, I like, I'm trying to figure out. That's another thing is like, I want to try and raise an army build with Kasai and clash. And I still just am not sure whether or not 
to stick with just blood on her hands because like i know we were talking about this earlier how like i felt like doing copper and gold at the same time is just like really tedious and not often a, a great payoff but you seem to have found a pretty nice like stabilization in between that where you're just like copper might just be the move you might just need to like stay away from gold a little bit and just you know get a little bit as you can but you can get some consistency in gold because really if you look at raids on army you really only need two three tops Mm -hmm. i mean three centauri cell swords and i mean like ninjas obviously just laugh at that but like most others i mean like a guardian up against three of those guardians will will crumble to a, a set of of uh centauri cell swords so i'm I'm curious to see there's just like there's so many insane different matchups that occur between all these different heroes because mm-hmm. like you you know they're things you've never seen before like you'll you know in classic instructed you will never see unless you're playing in the living legend you'll never see Kasai new Kasai go against an oldem or go against Starfo like well we don't see it go against Starfo so right you know, <laughs> luckily, Starvo we here. don't have to go we don't have to go against Starfo I'm very thankful for that <laughs> oh my god gosh that would have been i couldn't even imagine a 20 health starvo in clash i think i think we'd have to just throw away the format (laughs) yeah he would break it Uh, part of me wants to see it and the other part of me is like no we're 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 done done i don't need i live through that meta i don't want to live through that meta (laughs) um that was when i played a ton a ton and i played against so much starvo Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah i think that there's a lot of cool stuff people are experimenting um you know, just in Kasai alone, like right there, like, what do you go? And then, and then, you know, kind of to your point, we have old Kasai too. Yep. And so it's like, well, like why, why run blood on your hands and new Kasai? Why don't I just run that in old Kasai? Mm-hmm. My point, my, the reason why I do it is because I like the free swords. Right. So you draw, then you get free swords. Whereas in old Kasai, it's like I had to have blood on my hands and I had to have a blue. Mm-hmm. On my hand. And if I can figure out how to get gold or something where I can draw it up and, do thing you know there's there's just different things to do in there to Mm -hmm. pressure to to get that free um so you know i I think in the end you're going close to about the same (laughs) because but i just like that the extra the extra draw that that Mm -hmm. you that. but it is it is a lot more work like yep and there's sometimes where you're just like i can't pull this off because i had to use my copper generators Mm -hmm. because i have one big copper generator in there but there's just, you know, there's a lot of unique stuff. Um, Olympia, I'm still waiting a couple cards. I actually think Olympia, um, actually think I like Olympia better than Kasai, which is saying are you a double, lot. Are you double hatchets Olympia? Yes. Yeah, I think that's the, I think that's the play for sure. Well, I I, as much it. as I really wanted, I really want to figure out a Decimator X Olympia build, but like, I just don't think, I think it's way more consistent with double hatchets. And I feel like we still don't have enough to do like insane decimator axe plays for me to be like, yeah, no, we'll play We'll play decimator axe. I feel like it's just different per hero, but I believe the double hatches is very nice for Olympia. So yeah, it's, it's really nice. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think like the cool thing about this is, you know, like you said, Betsy, like why play Betsy over Bravo? Right. Because Bravo is just better. But the beautiful thing of doing a budget format is when you're drawn to a hero, your hero is just not, if you if you like, hey, I'm gonna learn this hero, I'm gonna build a, a cool deck of it. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like nobody's like really that far ahead. Mm-hmm. So it's like, hey, I'm gonna do Betsy because I really like this hero. I like the way she looks or this or that. You know, like she's got a lot of she's got a big following, I feel like. Yeah. She's starting to. People want to play her, so they're waiting mm-hmm. for her to be good. But in this format, it's like, well, she could be good. She could be. I, I mean, mean she, I just, she probably is good, honestly. It's just a matter of um, you know. Hey, consistent dominate over Rager with plus one, but like I, you, she's not like oh she's bad. Like I, yeah, I'm she's, sure she's definitely good. not. She's definitely not a bad hero. I mean, even even if you just look at the card bit big alone, like the fact that only Betsy can use it, she immediately gets three wagers off of it, and you don't have to even play like a ton of resources to play it. So you're able to come in, pump that thing with another pump get it to like 11 12 or something and then just like give it overpower overpower it's not yeah it's overpower is not as like good as dominate obviously but overpower still provides a tempo shift in a way right like you're still getting that tempo shift in which you're going to go okay 
you know, if you're going into a another Guardian match, in most cases, they've got either a D-React in hand or they've got, uh, you know, a bunch of attack actions that they're just looking to pitch and block Ooh. with and then attack. And it's great because, like, in, in that moment, you can only block with one action. So you're just kind of, you know, you have to still give your opponent the the choice of, you know, how do I want to change my hand around? How do I want to move these things? Or what's what's my move after I do this? And how much damage am I taking? And then not to mention the value off of wagers alone. Because getting, you know, an additional resource and an additional plus one to your next attack on top of any other wagers you do, like you can crack a gold with her helmet and then make another might in vigor on top of it. And so now Betsy can block out on stuff on her turn and just pretty much go, okay, cool. I get to play my stuff for nearly free and still wager because why not? It's, I feel like there's still some versatility, but having, having her helmet. It's good. Differentiates her from Bravo as well. The difference for sure, between for sure. two block and one block. Right. A temper so helmet. Three, three, three blocks. Uh, uh, yeah. It's block. a temper two helmet that doesn't need to be destroyed to use its effect outside of Helm of Ice and Speak, which is Battle Worn One, and then you get five cards in your hand if you pitch for it. And I mean, it's there there's value in both ways, but I definitely think that if if you were to choose the Guardian helmet, Betsy's helmet is incredibly good unless you're going to start running the the civic one and at that point if you're going to have your opponent draw a card to block two i think you're losing that value there so the, the only the only one i have the civic one is in is um uh what's her face the the girl guardian what am I forgetting her name? balda balda thank you yeah it's balda oh that's because right because you get seismic surges right you get you seismic surge. right? like here draw a card i'm gonna get a yeah. seismic surge mm-hmm. I don't know. Oh, I know another dark horse. You were well. I mean, I guess they're probably a dark horse. Another one that you were talking about was Yoji. You seem to. Yeah. I mean, Yoji seems to be very um, intra after building that Yoji deck and then trying it out. I mean, like it. It is kind of ridiculous. I mean, it's a it's a drag, but like it is the two health. I mean, just being able to block everything out and just go. Okay, cool. Hammer, 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 hammer. All right, cool. Yeah. And it's my turn. I'm done. Like I don't need to worry about it. I. I, I, think it's I nice. The build I have for him, I haven't built it yet, but um, is uh, that, I, that I was testing is a clash build. So oh, yeah, just like high attack and stuff like that. You know, you put mm-hmm. the ones that block, you clash. And right. So you're just doing that and mm-hmm. creating some value, and and um, that way you can just kind of get a little bit of bonus on on your turns. Right. Just Victor with two health, mm-hmm. extra two extra health. I think it's nice. So I think it's there's a lot there's a lot of heroes that you know you could probably see and I'd be very curious to to see what we see at top tables after everything is all said and done what people are gonna yeah are gonna yeah, I know for, yes 100% I know for me like the reason why I like Olympia for Kasai at the moment is literally the extra two block mm-hmm. you get a lot of you get a lot of the attacks and things like that and yeah you can't do as much with it but like that extra two block that that can save you right absolutely and it's and you know, the more health you can get out of your equipment, the more, the better off you're going to be, you know, and, and even, I mean, even up the ante is a better, if like, if you look from raise an army to up the ante, like up the ante is a way better specialization in like card compared to raise the army because the raise an army, you need, you need all these other things beforehand. You need to generate them. Whereas you know, up the ante, you pitch a blue into it, and now you get three wagers and plus three to your attack, all during the reaction step, which is always like sketch for very various heroes that might not run D reacts or might not uh, do anything like you know have any instance to to work with. So, I think it's a it's a it's a good card. I think Olympia is going to be really nice. I think so. But, anyways, I know we're we're a little bit over. Uh, any last things you want to add in, Alex? Hmm. Um, well, I would say if I'm going to add anything, I just you know hope that everybody uh, has a chance to check out Clash for themselves. Um, I know Nathan and I were were working on several different things for the hub here to make sure that we have deck lists for people and uh, different little gameplay aspects and 
We want to get the games from our Clash Bash up there as well. So we're work, you know, we're working all on making sure that content for Clash is being consistently brought to all of you. So uh, make sure that if you do like these uh, these budget builds for something like Clash, let you know. Let us know if there's certain heroes you'd like to see. Also, um, we do appreciate all feedback we get on this format. So if there is anything, whether it be criticisms or you know positivity that you might see. You know, we at the committee would love to to hear from you guys. It's a very open forum kind of, uh, you know, group project in a way to finalize Clash to a way that where everybody is going, oh man, I just, you know, I can't get enough of this format. I want to play it more than I do Classic Constructed. And just people playing it in, in with their friends and playing it at armories and playing it at, you know, a bar. I think it's, it'll be, it'll it'll be great. So again, just be open about it. We love hearing from you, so don't uh, don't be shy to let us know if there's something that you'd like to see changed. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to plug down below too. We have Ashwing CCG um, in the description, so check out his channel. I know he's got some stuff up there on mm-hmm. Commoner and Clash. Uh, other than that, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.